Welcome back to Talk of the Town. We're joined by our very good friend, Vicki McCarthy from Madison Community, Community Montessori School. <laughs> Vicki, welcome back to the program. Thanks so much, Justin. Yeah, and so we're going to be talking a little bit about screen time today. That's right. And uh, screen time is not just television, but it's computers, it's iPads, it's any, anything right. that has a screen that you need to use to right. interact with. And um, kids are using those all the time today. Yes. Uh, is there like a recommended amount of screen time that kids should have based on their age or otherwise? Yep. yep, so the American Academy of Pediatrics does make some recommendations. They actually discourage any use of screens at all for children under the age of two and then up to two hours of educational programming a day for older children. And just as you mentioned, screen time used to mean just like TV and videos, but now there are so many screens available for kids to use that it isn't really a surprise that the amount of screen time has gone up for kids. So um, in some of the research that I've done, I found that kids under the age of two are getting one to two hours a day. Kids between two and five seem to be getting somewhere between two and four and a half hours a day. And then kids eight to 18 are getting up to seven hours of screen time a day. So it's really just highlighting that it's something parents should be aware of and think about since it contradicts the American Academy of Pediatrics recommendations by such a great amount. Right, and that's that's computers, that's iPads, that's telling right. all put together. It is, yeah, right, right. Yeah. So talk to us a little bit about some of the, the hazards of having too much screen time mm -hmm, for kids. Mm -hmm. There are definitely some negative implications. Um, first of all, screen time is habit forming, so that's why it's really important for families and parents to be looking at this early on with their children. Um, it can, there's some research that indicates that it links to um, child obesity, um, problems with sleep patterns, um, for young children, language ac delayed language acquisition and undermining learning, and then some psychological difficulties. So things like hy um, hyperactivity, emotional and conduct problems in school, poor, poor performance in school, peer relationships, those kinds of things. Right. And uh, what are some things, I'm, I'm just curious, what are some things that parents can do to limit, and let's, let's just take TV for example, to limit the amount of exposure to television that, um, that their kids are getting? Well, first of all, we want to make sure the TVs are out of the kids' bedrooms. A lot of people have them in the kids' bedrooms, and then you're not even able to really quite monitor the amount of time that they're watching the TV, but also the kind of TV that they're watching. So it's best to have the TV in a more centrally located place in your home. Um, you also want to eliminate it as background noise or background TV. We were talking about that just a little bit earlier before the show, but um, it's it's so often just almost like a radio. It's just playing in the background, and then it it can easily distract the person who wasn't actually intending on going, you know, having a screen time moment, but then getting getting drawn in. So you want to eliminate that, and then um, don't eat in front of the TV. Mm -hmm. When people eat in front of the TV, they tend to sit there longer. But then they also do something called mindless munching, where you're just like not even thinking about it and you're just eating, which is how um, it leads to weight gain. Um, so one thing, another thing to consider would just be to try like not having the TV on once a week or if that's too much, maybe once a month and just go for like a family night or a game night or some people call it a power outage where you can just live without the TV on for, sure. you know, commit to that once a month or a week or whatever works for your family. And have some face-to-face -face That's right. That's right. Yeah. So um, what, about, what about other screens like computers, video games, cell phones? Um, how can parents really monitor uh, the kids' use of those items? Right. So much in the same sort of way, um, there, there should be some rules set up in a family's household. Uh, obviously, that depends on each family, and everybody's family life is different. But really, when you're thinking about school-age children, they, um, they're so busy, and, and they have sports, and they, uh, when they're older, they have jobs, and so they really don't have a lot of free time. So you really don't want to encourage them just to spend the free time that they have in front of a screen. You want to get them out doing other things. So um, setting up some rules, like perhaps you have a basket for an older child that's right near the entryway of your home, and they drop their cell phone in the basket when they enter, and then they can do their homework, do their chores, um, help with dinner, clean up dinner before they get access to their cell phone again. Um, you want to just encourage other kinds of activities, get them outside, get a jigsaw puzzle going in your living room where it's sort of a community space that kids can do sure. that with their family. Um, and then the really most important piece as adults is that we have to be really careful about our own use of screen right. time. We definitely serve as role models, yep. and children are watching us, and so we got to monitor that for ourselves, too. Absolutely. And we just have a few seconds left, but I'm wondering if you can talk to us a little bit about Screen Free Week. I'm really excited right. to hear about this. So Screen Free Week is the first week in May, May 4th through the 10th, and people can get more information on screenfree.org. But it's basically an opportunity to encourage families to unplug for the week 
and oftentimes schools will support that week and so it's a little bit easier sometimes when your kids friends are doing it too and so check to see if your school's doing it we certainly do it at our school and um, it's, it's a good way to just kind of kickstart some changes in your family life awesome well, Vicki McCarthy, it was so nice talking with you today. Same here, Justin. Thanks. Vicki McCarthy is from Madison Community Montessori School, and we'll be right back with more Talk of the Town. Stay right here.